My comment though is, is it unprofessional for a critic to say, like, what's his name? Uh, Liquid Metal. I think he should start charging these Instagram uh, food vendors because they use his sermon so much. Can I do that? <laughs> okay. Let me just move on from there. All I'm going to say is that I don't know why they decided to Olo to raid this child. <laughs> Welcome to this channel where we do all things African cinema. My name is Pearl. If you're a first or second time visitor and you're not subscribed, would you please consider subscribing? And if you're a return visitor and you're not subscribed, we already have a relationship. So please let's not make this into a friends with benefits relationship, okay? And guys, please don't forget to like this video. Today we're reviewing Tokumbo. This is a thriller drama streaming on Netflix. I said thriller drama because that's what it says on Netflix. However, this this movie was heavily marketed as an action movie so make of that what you will. This movie is written by Todimu Adegoke and Tekla Uzozie and is directed by the man himself Ramsey Noah. I believe this is his third directorial feature. For its synopsis it says an ex-car smuggler is given three hours to deliver a government official's daughter to her captor or else his family will suffer the consequences. Now let me just give you a brief sort of summary of plot and maybe just general comment. This movie is about a former car smuggler called Tokumba. Actually, when we meet him, he's still a car smuggler, but he's on his way out because he's having a baby. So he has decided at this point of meeting him to quit this life of crime and focus on his new role as a responsible dad. However, the child falls ill and it be what it be, no money. He's not able to make ends meet. And so it happens upon a chance situation that is basically a siren call back to this life of crime he's delivering packages but eventually one of the packages he's required to deliver is a little girl and he has to make this decision that could change the course of his life and the life of his family this seems like a very simple premise very straightforward and you know very linear and all of that cause effect my comment though is is it unprofessional for a critic to say my criticism is i couldn't finish this movie and let that just be it let that be my comment about the movie let that be my criticism like like, can I do that? <laughs> because I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Anyway, you know what? Let's not jump the gun. Let's talk about the performances. Number one on this slate, of course, is Gideon Okeke. He plays the role of Tokumba, which is the titular character of the titular. I mean, sometimes I talk too fast. Titular character. <laughs> of this movie Gideon is a good actor just as a general statement I didn't like him very much back in the days of Tinsel but then Tinsel be what Tinsel is that's where I started so it's not this it just is what it is you know and I didn't like him there as much however from the days of Giddy Blues you know and I've liked quite a few of his performances he can be very effective as an actor he's, I think he's just got this rare kind of aura his acting is also very physical as it is in this movie and I want you know about this particular sort of like charm or charisma or aura that he has if it's as a result of his prowess as an actor or partially because of his enigma because he's not one of the ones that have that are overexposed if we saw him as often as we see If we saw him that often, you know, would he have the same allure? Or would he still be as special as he is whenever I do get to see him? You don't really know. But I know that, like I said, he's usually quite effective. His performances are usually pretty good, pretty strong for the most part, and also like really physical when required. In this particular movie, again, being the lead, being the main character here, I think he really, really carries this movie. He's, there's some places where you could say he's got comedic timing. I would just say as a general statement that Gideon does his best for the scripts that he has. That's, I think, the highest praise you can give as far as this movie. Because sometimes, no matter how good you are, you know if you do pass the script, is all I'm going to say. Now, as far as this character also, I I am really, like, disconnected from this character. And that goes to the writing. Uh, not so much the directing in that case, but um, mostly the writing and the story. You know, that's the writing. And... The <laughs> 
just all the elements you know what this movie blew my mind so uh, you can see that my mind is blown i don't even know how to articulate a criticism right now let me just move on to dara Siminadi. now i can't shit on a child so i'm going to say that she's good in general but i really don't like her in this movie at all i think it's the writing but also the directing of this child this is not a very good character i don't like this character and unfortunately that spills over consequentially too i say consequentially actually that's correct but also consequently to i swear i'm not drunk i promise although i think that this movie would have benefited from the treatment of merry men you remember how i was drinking and just by the end of that movie i was completely insane i think that's what i should have done here i would have been having more fun for sure but i'm fasting so bad for me good for you you get a more thoughtful review we hope all right moving on to chidi mokeme you know what he's quite good here i like him he generally plays the villain role while he's gaza however i've seen him be this person in shantytown i've seen him him be this person in Merry Men 3. I've seen him be this person in Half Heaven and so on. I would say that this was probably the best of those performances, but that does not necessarily give me anything unique or fresh or anything to say about his performance. Then Full Lala Fiebi Raimi, she plays the character of Fala Shade here. She's also a very important character here. And all I'm going to say is Full Lala is Full Lala of Violated, Full Lala is Full Lala of Tinsel, it's Full Lala of Adire, it's Full Lala of Criminal. She's Full Lala of all the movies that we see her in again not much to say typecasting on steroids adunia day she's a ya mulika here and adunia day is adunia day i'll just hang that there majid michael he plays the character of raymond here but everything that was done with that character was annoying so i don't care stanley funny bone plays chukudi here and he's a friend of tokumbo he does good in the scenes that we see him in but also we don't see him a lot and there are some places where his character could have been used more effectively and wasn't and that impacts of course on the actor and what he's given to chew on which isn't much we have Tosin Ademi another person also that could have been better utilized you know what let's just leave it at the performances were what they were I don't see much evidence of directing of the actors here Gideon Okeke quite stand out every other person it just is what it is all right what works one of the things I first like about this movie from like the opening images is just I like the tone very much of this movie, the art direction, the well, color grading, the lighting, and just also how grounded in sort of Nigerianness you could say that this movie is in some aspects. There are a few really nice touches, like where that gold goalpost is set up, you know, to foil a car chase by the policeman, the neighborhood greeting, you know, that's also something that is just, just it, that always is an easy way to make a, a movie feel very have a very community feel you know where people are just like greeting each other and recognizing each other and stuff like that then the way Tokumbo's friend uh, Chibuna when Aduni Ade's character comes in that's Iya Mul Mulaki whatever her character's name is when she comes in and Tokumbo tries to say he's fine and the friend Chibuna says it's a lie I was like oh that is so you know Nigerian like we are all up in each other's business so just this a tone this movie definitely has a Nigerian feel feel like I said in some aspects definitely not with the story because the story is what it is also of course the language of this movie is mostly pigeon so that's also another thing that is easy to make it like just feel very authentic to us and then of course i would say that the makeup tried you know adunis makeup uh, yeah somebody tried yeah mulika and then of course the stop of uh, the amputee i thought that that also looked pretty good and then the costume is mostly okay this is not a movie that requires much by way of costume however the way funlola and Norbert young are stuffed into their costumes that dress that funlola wore she was bursting out of it when i saw nobel young i was like oh my god it was a lot i already talked about the lighting and the color grading but let me just specify also just there's this play of light and shadow in many of the scenes especially in the beginning that's really really well done and just all these use of golden tones with the night lights and all of that is quite good there's also you know a lot of shiny bodies and sweating which in this case is a good mechanism for storytelling in the way that it immerses you in sort of like the, the way you can feel like the ambient temperature but also the internal sort of conflict or 
panic or restlessness or whatever in a particular scenario however this is not consistent there are parts in the movie when you should see that like sweating or whatever and it's missing so again there could have been better quality control all around and also with Fun Lola by the way correct me if I'm wrong but she had like a microphone in her back in the back of that dress and I just could not not see it maybe it's just me I don't know okay there's a clear commitment to this film's aesthetic which is the summary of everything I've said so far about the color and the tone and all of that there are also some pretty good shots you also some nice framing some of the editing is also decent especially the transitions however as a general statement on cinematography that's where I draw the line because I've always told you guys that cinematography is not just oh we have nice shots here and there and so on and so on it's how all of these things serve the storytelling and I there's no evidence of that here there are lots of beautiful shots there's nice framing there's nice transitions and so on and so on but if they don't all come together and they remain disjointed it does not work and therefore the cinematography fails and let's talk about this story I like how they bring full circle Ia Mulika's trauma the way she's been dealt with by uh, Gaza and then how that plays out in the end when it's like she's a victim sort of of Stockholm syndrome that was supposed to be shocking and i was shocked at first like how could she then i now realized that that was done pretty good like also the use of irony here with tokumba's character how he's literally putting the life of another child at risk in order to save the life of his own child so i thought that that was a good like sort of narrative irony uh there of course we have the obligatory rape the obligatory white man actor script from the bottom of the acting barrel i'm sorry i hope that's not too rude but you know if you're wondering why that falls in the what works section i will just tell you that i found that oddly comforting it's very familiar to see some of those things that we rave about so much at a point it just becomes something that you just hate watch it just makes me feel like i know exactly what kind of movie i'm dealing with okay all right guys have you liked this video please don't forget to like and i really appreciate a comment from you so please tell me what you're thinking so far about this review and about the movie if you're not subscribed please go ahead and hit that button and and also don't forget to share this video gosh i don't ask for much at all all right guys what does not work let's get to it and hint many many things but i'll try not to spend too much time because i'm not a hater now this movie lost me almost from the very beginning the car chase mm, it, it was what it was it's nollywood after all so i'm not going to say a lot about that however that exposition in the opening sequence was just so incongruous to that whole scene um you guys if you watch cooking videos niger cooking videos on instagram those voiceovers they use where somebody's cooking you know and as the narrative it has nothing to do with the cooking is eh -heh. that's how one day i went and saw my boyfriend he did it, did it or more commonly and i really think what's his name uh liquid metal I think he should start charging these Instagram uh, food vendors because they use his sermon so much in these videos. Anyway, that's what this opening sequence sounded like. It sounded like one of those Instagram cooking videos with that funny voiceover. The next thing that really, really made me almost stop watching this movie because it actually got my heart rate up is the score. The soundtrack is pretty decent for the most part. There were some tracks that were quite good, but the score, it, just, it, it actually went from distracting to actually upsetting so didn't enjoy the score at all and that was mostly in the beginning part i'm not sure if that was supposed to be used to heighten the tension and the action sequence or whatever it didn't work my leg is dying my leg is always dying there's really little thought that goes into the designing of the villain that's raymond majid michelle his character is just the cliche uh wearing a hat and then smoking a cigar and holding a brand <laughs> really do they have a meeting where they all agree that this is the uniform and the aesthetic? Of course, if it's a woman, just put a cigarette in her mouth and she's a bad bitch, okay? That's not very mindful. What I want to ask specifically though about this character is why we have to have the distorted voice on his side. It's trying to mask his voice for Falashade because he's a person that is known to her. But that crosses over also into trying to mask his voice to us, the audience, which is why we have the distortion of the voice on the side of the speaker. But do you see how silly that is? His voice does not come. Is he wearing something in his mouth? Is he Bane? In the Batman uh, Dark Knight Rises, is he Bane that his voice comes out? Gotham will be saved. It, because I believe that that distortion comes through 
it comes through something that is put in the phone so how are we getting a distortion on the side of the speaker but well, first of all why do we even care we don't know him so this whole thing was very very poorly thought out everything about this villain was poorly thought out the story itself and i'll come to more on that later and also by the way the reveal of majid michelle or michael whatever as the villain i don't know if they thought it was an aha moment it's not it's not very interesting who the hell is he we don't care he sounded like we said, oh he was Majid and oh my god anyway let's talk story there's not very great character introductions or character uh, development for Tukumbo I thought there was a great character introduction for him as far as sort of the characterization of that character but re in retrospect it wasn't because it all comes to nothing he's uh, introduced as a very good driver we don't see how that comes into play during the whole kidnapping and delivery saga so in the end it doesn't matter that he's a Formula 1 style driver and then for the longest time I have no idea who I'm dealing with as far as this character so I feel very disconnected to this Tokumba character it doesn't help also that there's no defining of the values of this character but also just the characters in general in order you know to know when they go against their values I would say that the character that got the, got the best probably character development is Gaza because at least he has shown what he can do what he's willing to do so at least you know you know exactly where you stand with this person but every other person is I'm Ambiguous, and that doesn't make for very interesting uh, viewing I'm sorry and so for instance we assume that Tokumbo is a good guy he seems like he's been presented to us as a good guy with values but he's been a smuggler right and then now he's pretending to be shocked that what he's delivering is drugs what do you think you're delivering in small packages and being paid hundreds of thousands of naira and then of course potentially he's a child abductor but again we don't know his values so we don't know whether this is something that he would do whether or not his child was at the point of death you know and then of course we have his friend who when he's established he sort of has an aura of honesty and respectability around him you know and so in order to decommission him we just have him ask no questions he literally sees his friend logging a child it's normal to just see your friend logging a child over the shoulder a strange child for that matter and then also this friend he could have been played f to be sort of conflicted when he has to implicate his friend to the police however they decide to play that for cheap laughs there was there was just no thought put into any of that at all and then the child Nikkei this is a child who she finds herself in a kidnapper's net how many times has this child been kidnapped in her life because she's not startled for even one minute there's no place where she exhibits any concern or any fear it's easy we already had the ingredients there it was to throw it in the pot and fucking cook the soup we have have this child as a martial artist she's practicing martial arts and one of the first things you learn is fear is only a thing of the mind so that whole morning sequence when she was introduced with her mom if they had used that time to find a way to introduce something about fearlessness as a mantra into her character so that when then she gets kidnapped she's a child we could see her starting to become afraid and then if we saw her because let's assume that this is how we want to play her but make it make sense make us see her overcome this fear and tie it to her martial arts it was there it was right there also you know there are all these attempts that are made at humor but they just fall flat we have baby shark when a woman is in labor i don't know what that means it's supposed to be funny that man who comes into the taxi also we have scenes that are not functional you know like you have scenes and you wonder what they are set up to achieve for instance when we have Tokumbo boxing in that scene I'm watching him like I don't know what am I supposed to be feeling in this scene I realize I don't know I'm just looking at him he's boxing he's sweating but then we now segue to finding out that months have passed and his child is ill and like oh now that makes sense but I don't care at that point so that's a problem of structure you know and speaking more of structure there's just the, hand the handling of time when I saw that baby also I was like this baby it's not a baby that was just born like on screen three minutes ago then I see the amputee and that's when I realized oh several months have passed so giving us like retrospective okay is not cool is structuring is just off and then the storytelling itself what should just be a simple linear story is pretty disjointed and just in general lacking in heart and in emotion you know I just felt nothing 
in this movie but we'll get to that here's a movie that we've seen recently that has a very similar theme you know a sick child the love of a father sends him out to work his guts out you know also driving what a taxi you, we know the movie we're talking about right a father's love we reviewed it you know check that out if you haven't we felt that in this case nothing so i'll put this in the same category as saving on nome that's another movie about a sick child in the you know needing surgery and parents that go to commit crime wow <laughs> speaking of tropes we also have a gun running shylock here who this one is just borrowed directly from kill borrow then you know more about robbery you know for a medical condition we can throw a tribe called judah right into this cooking pot we have also this high powered newly appointed female official under threat because of her new role and her policies and we have this one straight from offshoot how many movies have i mentioned here so far and all of them i have reviewed okay you can check them all out so i'm just wondering could all of the above be you know a hint that we probably need to be more creative in our storytelling that one is not for this movie it's just as a general note to the industry now this movie has a lot of dialogue that is just so pretentious we have that scene where the child is missing that phone call between the parents and the phone call is just like a dick measuring contest like what the hell is that i don't know what all that conversation about crypto is as well the conversation itself as far as the writing but also the delivery by all those people involved all of it does not work there's so many things about this movie that the elements are there but somehow they don't come together now I want to talk about the conflict for Fola Shade. You know that that makes no sense, right? A very similar character makes sense. I've already mentioned Offshoot here, right? In Offshoot, we also have a newly appointed female official and we have somebody threatening her. Now, the reason we can resonate with her and it does feel like a Skylar and Caribdis situation is because in this case, first of all, we are very close to drugs. We understand the impact and we know that this is something that somebody has to do. So that's something that at least it makes sense to a normal person all this conversation about crypto makes it doesn't mean anything to anyone because corruption is going to corruption we're so disconnected from it that i really don't care and then also in the instance of offshoot the character is being asked to like just basically resign you're wrong for this position because you're not going to do the demands of the cartel but in this case all they're asking her to do is postpone the press conference and your child has been kidnapped and it, it's a no-brainer your conflict cannot be a no-brainer you have to really feel like you're between the the devil and the deep blue sea or something to round off this section i just want to point out something that is already clear to everyone listen if this story is a game of jenga especially the second half of this movie if we poke through this movie with a bit of common sense say you pulled out one element and you know what that element is taking that child to seme can you see how it all falls apart so can anybody tell me why Can anybody tell me what was the point of this sojourn or whatever it is to Seme? Why this child had to be taken to Seme? I'll tell you what. It was to give Tokumbo something to do. Because this movie came away from being about him to being about Falashade and Raymond. But they didn't know what to do with him because he's been introduced to us as the main character. And they have to find a way to somehow tie him to this other story that has nothing to do with an ex-smuggler trying to make a life. So in order to keep this, you get him to pick up a child. But you're too lazy to create complications on there are a million things that could go wrong with a kidnapping. But the writers are like, whoa, mm, cannot be stressed. So instead, let's just make it, let's just have him carrying the child to Seme for what? You know why this doesn't work? This kidnapping is positioned to achieve a very specific objective or end goal, and that's to get her to back down on a policy. Not, in fact, not even that. That ask is too much. Like I said, it's to cancel a press conference, right? Or to postpone a press conference. There's no hint of malice from Raymond, right? There's no indication that there's anything malicious towards Falasha Day where he wants to do her long-term irreparable harm. We don't know that he wants to kill her child. What do you think would happen to a child that is taken to Seme? I know that there was a statement there somewhere when Tokumbo reports about the police and he's like, oh, it took you long enough to figure out something like that. Almost as though he asked him to take the child to Seme, but counted on the fact that he would not be able to do it. From them
okay. Let me just move on from there. All I'm going to say is that I don't know why they decided to allow to raid this child. <laughs> There's another movie again that has made its way in here. Wow, this movie is such a popery. Like, ooh. And then also, you see this child? This child that is drugged and is so alert all at once. Like, even if he didn't get an opportunity to, you know, he was supposed to... Actually, he did inject her. <laughs> And these things are such an easy fix, right? Like, all that needed to happen there was to create a set of circumstances that made it impossible for him to inject her the thing at the time when he was supposed to, so that that way she would become fully alert and it would make sense. Okay, final thing. I don't know what I'm supposed to feel about that ending. I don't know if that's supposed to be some kind of redemption arc for our hero. Is it like the child just told the mom, I know he looks like a bad guy, but really he's a nice guy. You know, that day he kidnapped me, we bonded. I don't know. But you know, if you like happy endings, take it. I'm not going to fight you on that. So in conclusion, I'm just going to say guys that this movie is a drag. What should have been a simple plot, but just really, really all around poorly executed. What's funny is that this story is actually like really a tried and tested and trusted recipe. But then this just adds nothing, you know, except for a whole lot of just confusion and bafflement. The story is in Kuwait. Okay. In order for this movie to work, here are some things that we're supposed to care about. We're supposed to care about Tokumba's film financial state, we're supposed to care about his sick child, you know, and the fate of that child, we're supposed to care about his moral conflict, you know, as far as what he's being required to do, we're supposed to care about the plight of Nike, you know, the girl, the child he, he kidnaps or he's asked to transport, we're supposed to care about Fola Shade's ambition, you know, and her policies, what she's trying to do for the good of the country, I don't give, nobody gives a fuck about crypto, you know, we're supposed to care about that and then we're also supposed to care about the life of her daughter, we're supposed to care about Iya Mulika's slavery, you know, to Gaza. By the way, I've already mentioned, you know, the obligatory rape scene because that has to happen. Can I just suggest that after he had amputated that boy, that was enough control, you know, like we didn't need to, but like I said, it has to happen. So that's another thing we had to care about that we didn't. So how is it, ladies and gentlemen, that we care about absolutely none of these things and if there's any of these things I, I i don't presume to speak for you if you care about any of these things please let me know but i couldn't care about any of these things so like this has got to be a fit truly oh and also this movie has no message and it has no value statement if you know what the value statement of this movie is let me know but i i couldn't tease out any i don't know what the point of this movie is and so i can't recommend this movie in any conscience good or bad any state of conscience the technical elements of filmmaking are too disjointed to form any kind of coherent whole it's not actually uh, enjoyable in particular i really could have quit like in the first 40 minutes or so and i'm being generous however you can watch this if you enjoy gideon okeke if you like to see effort and by the way there is a lot of effort that was put in here so let me just say that so that you don't think i don't acknowledge that i do but that's, that's not what criticism is about so that's it guys for tokumba thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't also comment like share all the things i appreciate you guys there's going to be the short version of this review links down below so please check that out and share as well before i go let me also say that i've had that contest for mommy water blu-ray running i don't know if you guys have seen that but please check it out you can still enter hint there's still room you can enter okay i'm going to announce the winners in a few days probably by the middle of this week and what do i tell you guys you have the right to an incredible viewing experience so never settle thank you